Once again, this is your man Wood of the Pay Me No Mind podcast. As I told you, it's 2018. I'm trying to move some different uh, material over to the YouTube channel, reviewing some music, movies, comedy specials. We'll see. But today we're going to get into Mudbound, which is a new project uh, available for streaming on uh, Netflix. A director uh, by the name of D. Reese put it together. The screenplay was by uh, D. Reese and Virgil Williams. And the movie also stars uh, Mary J. Blige. There's also uh, Jason Clark, Garrett Hudlin, uh, Carrie Mulligan, Jonathan Banks uh, from Breaking Bad. Um, there's also uh, Rob Morgan and Jason Mitchell. We'll get into some of those individual performances in just a second. But in looking at this, I wanted to give you some stats on the movie. Uh, it was released uh, to be streamed November 17th. So, you know, we're a little ways away from how long it's uh, from when it was released. But uh, I finally got a chance to check it out. I've been hearing so much about Mary J. Uh, her performance and, you know, possible awards and whatnot. But anyway, the movie's 134 minutes. So that's a little over two hours. Uh, $12 million budget right now on Rotten Tomatoes uh, the critic scores at like 97% and the audience scores at 86% so it's doing really well as far as those metrics um, I really thought it was interesting to take a look at D, uh, D. Reese the director real quick um, she's from Nashville uh, one of the things that I do with uh, the Pay Me No Mind show is trying to be inspirational and show that you know you can get ready to start you can get started doing whatever you want to do uh, whenever and I thought it was interesting for her because she went to college for business to study business administration she earned an MBA and uh, was actually working for a company based uh, nearby to me but Procter and Gamble and uh, she wasn't happy with what she was doing so at 26 years old she left and went to um, NYU Film School. I believe Spike Lee is a teacher there. Uh, but anyway, I just thought that was awesome. But in 2011, she made Pariah, and at that same time, uh, she came out of the closet as being um, that she was lesbian. And I guess that's one of the things that drives her in her storytelling. And, uh, you know, she's still kind of like uh, trying to figure out being comfortable with her sexual orientation. In one of the articles I read, she said, you know, how further, how much farther along she would be in life if she would have just came out when she was 17. So, um, interesting backstory on her. She also did Bessie in 2015, which was with Queen Latifah. I haven't seen that one yet. Um, but anyway, that led to Mudbound. So one of the things that she was saying in this article that I was reading on, I believe it was on Variety.com, was she felt like after uh, Pariah, she should have been doing a bigger budget movie. I think she also hustled up like $450,000 to get that movie made. So that's just, you know, she's resourceful, she's driven, and she's making um, pretty decent movies. So we'll look at, at Mudbound here. Uh, it's a period piece based in 1940s Mississippi, which... I hate to bag on Mississippi, but it's probably not too much different or dissimilar from what Mississippi is in 2017, at least in a lot of regards. But let me read you the synopsis of the, uh, of the movie, and then I'll get into my opinion on it. But uh, basically, it's two men return home from World War II to work on a farm in rural Mississippi where they struggle to deal with racism and adjusting to life after war. So, you know, right off the top, it's a period piece. Um, you know, obviously we're going to see certain themes. Uh, this digs into that. Um, I'll get into the, uh, the plot, but let me talk about a couple of the actors first. Um, Rob Morgan, who plays Hap Jackson, the head of the, the black family in the movie. Uh, you've seen Rob before in all of the Marvel series, Daredevil, uh, Jessica Jones, uh, Luke Cage, and even in The Punisher. And um, he's also popped up, and that's, he's playing Turk Barrett, who sells guns on the streets of uh, New York City 
in those series. Um, kind of a guy you wouldn't really notice, just kind of an afterthought guy, you know, a recurring role that popped up in each of the uh, franchises. But um, you never really take much away from him as being an actor because he plays his role so great uh, in the Marvel uh, properties. But he also popped up, I just watched Stranger Things season two, another small role. Uh, but here in Mudbound, we get to see a pretty strong performance from Rob Morgan. Um, he's actually a guy that I'll keep an eye out for. He plays the father of the family. Again, you can imagine in 1940s uh, Deep South with Jim Crow and everything that's going on, a family of four or five kids uh, living in poverty. Uh, you can imagine everything that that role would call for him to portray. Uh, Mary J. Blige, again, she plays Florence Jackson, his wife. Um, she did a pretty solid job. Uh, my wife commented that her New York accent was still kind of present in some of her dialogue, but I thought Mary did a thing. Um, Jason Mitchell. I was ready to go into a great backstory about Jason Mitchell. Uh, you'll be familiar with him from uh, Straight Outta Compton. His breakout role is playing Easy e Eric Wright of, uh, you know, NWA, obviously. But I could have sworn when in, uh, Straight Outta Compton came out that Jason, I mean, uh, yeah, that Jason Mitchell was working in like a fast food or a kitchen somewhere in uh, LA and just, you know, popped up for his role and uh, for his audition and came out as Easy e and then life's great for him. He's been in uh, the King, uh, the Island of Kong, uh, some of the movies. Uh, oh, he was in Detroit, which was uh, came out uh, maybe three or four months ago. And also he's getting ready to take off as a significant with a significant role in Showtime's new uh, series, The Shot. I've also seen that uh, that pilot episode, so um, I recommend checking that out. As that's, I don't think that one started yet, but as it gets released, uh, we'll dig into that one. It looks like a pretty interesting series, uh, and it's based in Chicago, obviously. But um, anyway, with Jason Mitchell, as I just read through some more articles, he was actually in two movies before uh, straight out of Compton so not so much the you know rags to riches story that I had been led to believe uh, maybe before one of those other movies was when he left his kitchen job to go to an audition for one of those um, maybe that's what it was I don't know but anyway the guy's star is definitely continuing to rise he does a very good job in this movie he plays Ronzel Jackson who's the oldest son of Rob Morgan and Mary J Blige he goes off to war, uh, I think it was World War II, yes, World War II, and uh, he's a tank, uh, he looks like he's a tank commander, which was kind of odd to see that uh, non-commissioned officers, especially, you know, in that day and age, a black man, uh, it was kind of odd to see him, uh, you know, leading this tank uh, detail. But they didn't go spend a lot of time into that. But anyway, one of the things that you see with his his character is something that I've heard many times before, is that the uh, the black men, the black soldiers, uh, were treated a lot. They had a lot more equality over in uh, in Europe during these wars. It was still some different forms of discrimination and all of that. But uh, he actually has a European girlfriend, a white girlfriend in the movie that he's seen. Uh, that he spends time with when he's not in war. Again, they don't spend a lot of time in the war. On the other side of the family, or the other side of the script, is the McAllen family, and Garrett Hudlin is also in the Army uh, in World War II. He's a fighter pilot, uh, or a bomber. So, these two guys come back home, you know, from their respective journeys in the war, and... Jason Mitchell was all emboldened because he's this soldier and he's been living, you know, relatively free, uh, fighting this war, and he comes back to Mississippi and nothing has changed. As a matter of fact, um, he meets uh, Carrie Mulligan, the wife uh, of the McAllen family, the matriarch, 
of the McAllen family. And uh, he meets her at the corner at a, a supply general surplus store or something. And he comes in the front door. And then as he gets ready to leave, the rest of the McAllens, Pappy McAllen, who's played by Jonathan Banks, confronts him and lets him know that, no, son, you need to leave through the back door as always. So we see some of this Jim uh, Crow, you know, uh, stuff, colored only stuff, uh, whites only, colored only. Um, they don't spend a lot of time of that, on that. Um, they deal a little bit with the relationship of, for some reason, the McAllens left Memphis to come back to uh, Mississippi to live on this farm. And Jason Clark is trying to lead his family you know, to get back into farming and to be uh, productive, to make a living. And then on that same property is the Jackson family. And they have some interaction between one another, but Hap Jackson, the father, sustains a significant leg injury and isn't able to get, you know, his crops in the ground in time. So uh, there's a little bit of, uh, of uh, tension between the two families. You can almost tell that probably earlier, uh, the Jackson family might have been owned by the McAllen family. Pretty common for that time, you know, pr prior, prior to the 1940s. Um, the main thing here is that the relationship, the movie focuses on the relationship, the bond between Garrett Hedlund's character and um, Jason Mitchell's character, Ron Zell. Uh, let me see real quick what Garrett Hedlund's, uh, Jamie, his name was Jamie. Garrett Hedlund um, comes back. He's dealing with alcoholism, uh, kind of post-stress disorder, or post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, he's trying to figure out what his role is now that he's no longer, you know, fighting wars. And he's also battling with some of the images that remain with him from losing um, fellow soldiers. Um, you know, during the war. So him and Jason Mitchell's character spend time together, drinking, reminiscing, talking about the war, and then they deal with, you know, well, what do we do now? And uh, that's kind of like the bulk of the movie. It is very slow. And one thing that I don't know how you are about narr narratives or narration during movies, but like five different characters do a lot of narrating. Um, it's, it, it gets pretty slow, but it's worth watching. So the fig, uh, the basic. So then you get like an hour and a half into the movie or something, and you're wondering like, okay, these two guys are spending time together. Uh, they're breaking different rules in the in in the rural in the rural South because uh, one of the things that you see is Jason Mitchell or Garrett Hudlin instructs Jason Mitchell to ride in the cab of the truck. You weren't allowed to do that back in the day. You know, if, if it was a black uh, family or a person, they had to be in the back of the vehicle. You couldn't share the same cab. But Garrett Hedlund is like, it's my truck. I'm going to do what I want. The man fought in the army, riding in front of the truck. So um, basically, we're seeing these differences, you know, to kind of illustrate the times. You're about an hour and 20, hour 30 minutes into the movie, and you're like, okay, where is this going? Well, the uh, conflict happens, or the climax happens, because uh, Jason Mitchell is, is struggling because he doesn't want to... He feels like after coming home from being a soldier, I can't go back to this, you know, to just farming. Uh, but he received notification that the woman that he was seeing in Europe had a child. Um, so let me wrap this up without spoiling too much. But over the first hour and a half of the movie, you can see that Pappy McAllen, played by Jonathan Banks, he's pretty diehard about this Jim Crow stuff and the levels between blacks and whites, and he wants to maintain that. Um... However it happens, he comes to find out that Jason Mitchell's character has, has fathered this biracial baby. And him and the boys, the good old boys in, in the town there in Tupelo, uh, they have to 
exact some punishment on Jason Mitchell for this transgression. Uh, and that's where this this whole thing uh, heats up at. I don't want to go into spoiling that for you, how that's all resolved, but that's kind of the last 20, 25, 30 minutes of it is, you know, the Ku Klux Klan shows up um, and they work through all of that. Um, and then also another thing that you'll notice in, in the movie is there's some tension between some sexual, not sexual, uh, there's basically sexual tension between Garrett Hedlund and um, the wife mother McCallan who is like I said Carrie Mulligan um, she sees Jamie McCallan as being more uh, exciting he's done a lot more in life than her husband Jason Clark's character uh, some things happen there I won't you can read into it why I won't touch on it but uh, it's just a bunch of people who are uh, disappointed in their lot in life and uh, it's, like I said, a pretty decent movie. I say three out of five. I mean, uh, five on a five-star rating, I would probably say three, three and a half. Obviously, it's a period piece that deals with slavery and uh, racism and discrimination and all of that type of stuff. Uh, we've seen that before, uh, you know, a couple of years ago with 12 years a slave or 12 years as a slave. Uh, last year was Birth of a Nation. So it's kind of odd. Or maybe, you know, I don't know where you are with those types of movies, but if that's what you're getting, you know, what do you do with that? Um, one thing I guess I would say for D. Reese is, you know, you've, you've told some of these historical stories. You know, when do we get to some of the modern uh, tales of, uh, you know, the lives and time, the lives and accomplishments and whatnot of black Americans? Uh, or African Americans, what have you. So, uh, I believe that's pretty much everything that I wanted to hit on. Um, like I said, it's a solid movie. Pretty good job by D. Reese. It'll be interesting to see what else she tackles in the future. Oh, yeah. I did want to say one more thing. I always forget to add. Look, please do me a favor. Hit that like button or become a subscriber to the Pay Me No Mind YouTube channel. In the near future, we'll start doing a lot more music. We'll tackle more TV series and uh, movies. And we'll talk about it in a way that I don't feel like it's being done. Uh, probably except with the exception for other YouTube channels out here. But uh, do help me out as I try to grow the, uh, the subscriber base. And we'll work on cutting these down and making them more, uh, you know, five to seven minutes. But it takes time. This is just the first one. So again, like I end all my podcasts, remember, you don't have to be great to start, but you'll have to start to be great.